Hey kids, how are you? It is great to see you today and I'm glad that you're back with us here in Kids World. Now, look, before we get going, I got to be honest with you. This is a, this is a little bit of a, a, maybe an emotional recording for me. Uh, today will be my last lesson to give you guys here online. Um, and that's sad for me, but not for you, uh, because you have an incredible new kids director coming in. Her name is Miss Sarah Fitzgerald. If you come here on the weekends, no doubt you have met her, probably even heard her teach there in our kids' room. So you guys are going to love her and love her lessons and all of that good stuff. So today, though, I just wanted to start off by telling you guys Thank you for watching every week. I love you guys, and I'm not leaving the church. I'm staying here. I'm just transitioning into a different position. I'll be overseeing our life groups, discipleship, and our care ministry, those kind of things. So I'm excited about the new adventure, uh, but I'm going to miss you guys. And so I just want you to know from the bottom of my heart how much I love you, and um, you're going to be left in fantastic hands. Miss Sarah will be awesome. So let's get into this. You know what we've got to do. We got to kick today off with a question, and then we'll come back around and we'll discuss it a little bit more, okay? So here is the question. Describe the most delicious meal you've ever eaten and what made it so delicious. Describe the most delicious meal you have ever eaten and then what made it so delicious. 60 seconds, count it down. Here we go. And we're back. So the question was this, describe the most delicious meal that you've ever eaten and what made it so delicious? I have no doubt you guys have eaten some delicious meals. And I imagine if I could hear your answers right now, we may hear about a really good pizza or maybe a really good cheeseburger, maybe some killer chicken nuggets um, or mac and cheese. I don't know. I think I kind of know what you kids like these days. But some of you may throw me a curveball and have some off-the-wall thing that you've eaten that you loved. I think for me, the most delicious meal that I've ever eaten, it could be that I was just really hungry, or it could just be that it was that good. But the deal was I had been in Honduras for two weeks on a missions trip, and um, we had been in some really remote villages. We're talking where the people, these families, just literally lived in a stick hut. Um, you could see through the walls all the way around it. Some of them just had like banana leaves as a roof over the house. It really wasn't what we would call a roof, but I guess it helped them. Um, but anyway, we had been there for two weeks, uh, ministering to those people, taking them food and care bags and things like that. And so while we were there, unbeknown to us, there was a big hurricane brewing and it hit Honduras, really the eye of the storm came right through where we were staying uh, in Honduras. And so we had survived that. We had been without power and water and all this kind of stuff for a while. And so uh, I was ready to get back home, as was everyone in our group. And so what we did is we left from where we were staying there in San Marcos de Colón, Honduras. We left there a day early uh, to go back to Tegucigalpa, which is kind of like the capital city there in Honduras. And we left early because a lot of the roads had been washed out by the hurricane, and we weren't sure how long it was going to take us to get back. So when we got back, they they had booked us rooms in this really nice hotel. Um, I mean, it was nice. And, and I think what made it so nice was we got to take a hot shower. Oh, it was the best hot shower ever. 
And, and so after we cleaned up and all of that kind of stuff, uh, they took us to this nice steakhouse there near the airport. And um, I ordered their skirt steak. And again, it, I, I don't know if I was just that hungry, but that thing was delicious. Oh, it had the best flavor ever. And they had some of their uh, native vegetables that they had cooked to go with it. It was so good. I mean, here we are 15, 17 years later, and I still remember this meal. That's how good it was. So I'm asking you these questions or talking about your favorite meal because today we're going to hear about a David. Now, yes, that David, the one that slew the giant, King David, he loved praising God so much that he compared it to like eating a delicious meal. So with that in mind, I want us to get curious for just a second. Why? Why do you think it's important for us to eat good food? Why do you think it's important for us to eat good food? Well, who wants to eat bad food? But seriously, why do you think it's important to eat good food? I think because good food gives our body the energy that we need to get through the day. Um, it helps our mind stay sharp. Um, it helps our, our body work better and, and, and things of that nature. But now let me ask you this. Why do you think it might be important to praise God? Why do you think it might be important to praise God? Well, we'll talk about that some more in a minute. Now, on the screen, you see a slide now that says nourishing or not. See, all of us need good food to nourish our bodies. What does it mean if something is nourishing? Well, something that is nourishing provides what our bodies needs to grow and be healthy. So I want us to play a little game where you decide what's nourishing and what's not nourishing. It'll, it'll actually test your memories as well. So I'm going to show you a picture here in just a minute on the screen of a tray. And on this tray are lots of items. Some of them are nourishing to our bodies and some of them aren't. So when I uncover the tray, you'll have 15 seconds. Yeah, only 15 seconds. So you got to act fast but you'll have 15 seconds to quietly study the tray and try to memorize everything on it, okay? Have you got it? Good, are you ready to start? Remember, you've only got 15 seconds. When the picture comes up, the countdown will start. So here we go. All right, so how many items did you, do you remember that was on there that was nourishing? How many do you, things do you remember that are nourishing? All right, what about how many things were not nourishing? Did, can you think of anything that you saw on the tray that wasn't nourishing? I'm sure you can. Well, look, today in God's big story, we're going to be back in the book of Psalms. Now, remember, Psalms are just poems or song poems, and David wrote a lot of these and he wrote them to God. See, David loved praising God so much. Again, I said this earlier, he compared it. He said it's like eating a really nourishing, delicious meal. See, praising God or telling him how wonderful he is, it satisfies our souls, kind of like a good nourishing meal satisfies our bodies. So today, you and I get to praise God like David did. And see, our wonder truth today is this. God is worthy of praise. God is worthy of our praise. And we'll learn more about that in just a minute. But for right now, it's time for us to get ready to sing, praise, and worship Jesus together. And it's always good to remind ourselves of who Jesus is and all the wonderful things that he does for us and that he promises us before we worship him. So let's say our kids' declaration together to help get our minds and hearts on him. All right, here we go. It says, thank you, God that you are good. You made me on purpose for a purpose, and I am your kid. You know me, love me, and lead me. My lips will glorify you, and I will praise you as long as I live. My life can tell of your wonder. All right, let's bow our heads for prayer, and then we'll sing a couple of songs together. Lord Jesus, thank you for the day Thank you for the time to be here online with the boys and girls today. God, you know how much our heart loves them. And it's kind of, it's a bittersweet moment. Uh, Lord, I have enjoyed these six years with the kids. 
and I love all of them dearly, but I'm so excited about Sarah coming in, and I know they're going to love her, and she's going to do an amazing job, and I'm excited about the new task that you've placed in my lap, God, and the calling that you've placed on me to lead in our life groups and discipleship and things of that nature, but right here today, we ask for your help as we do this last lesson with the kids. Um, God, I pray that you'll give me your words and that they'll flow through me in a way that the kids will understand so they can understand how important it is that we praise you and worship you because, God, you're so good to us. You're, you're so amazing. Your love for us blows my mind, and you and you alone are worthy of our praise. So I pray that we can communicate that to the kids today. We love you, and we need you, and we ask all these things in your name. Amen. All right, on your feet, let's sing a couple of songs together. Here we go.
In the darkness we were waiting Without hope, without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt To reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost To redeem the whole creation, you did not despise the cross For even in your suffering, you saw to the other side Knowing this was our salvation That stone was moved for good For the Lamb it conquered death And the dead rose from their tombs And the angels stood in awe For the souls of all who come To the Father are restored And the church of Christ was born Then the Spirit hit the flame Now this gospel All right, we're going to be reading from Psalms again today, and we'll be in chapter 63 and 108. Now, remember what we talked about last week concerning the Psalms. The authors of these Psalms, they wrote songs and poems that were praising God. So let's go ahead and dive into these verses today. Psalm 63, beginning in verse 1, says, God, you are my God. I'll seek you with all my heart. With all my strength, I thirst for you in this dry desert where there isn't any water. I've seen you in the sacred tent. There I've seen your power and your glory. Your love is better than life, so I'll bring glory to you with my lips. I'll praise you as long as I live. I'll call on your name when I lift up my hands in prayer. I'll be satisfied as if I had eaten the best food there is, and I'll sing praise to you with my mouth. 
As I lie on my bed, I remember you. I think of you all night long because you've helped me. I sing in the shadow of your wings. I hold on to you tightly. Your powerful right hand takes good care of me. Now we'll drop to Psalm chapter 108 and read a few verses there, beginning with verse 1. It says, God, my heart feels secure. I will sing and make music to you with all my heart. Harp and lyre, wake up. I want to sing and make music before the sun rises. Lord, I will praise you among the nations. I'll sing about you among the people of the earth. Great is your love. It's higher than the heavens. Your truth reaches to the skies. God, may you be honored above the heavens and let your glory be over the earth. Okay, so we'll stop reading there for now. But today's lesson begins with a man named David. Now, he was the writer of many of these psalms that we read in the Bible. And these were his song poems to God. To praise God, again, is to tell him how wonderful he is. And David wrote these psalms as a way to offer his praises to God because God did a lot for David. I mean, you remember, God helped David defeat a giant. God protected David from the wild animals. He protected him from these different men that wanted to kill him. So no matter what David went through, God was faithful to him. He even made David king over Israel and was always there to forgive David when he sinned and repented. See, David wanted to give God all the praise and thanks he deserved. And to do that, David wrote two psalms, Psalm 63 and 108. Now, yes, he wrote more psalms than that, but these two particular. And, and, and here's how they play out. See, David was in the desert and it was hot. He was so thirsty. So he started uh, his song poem to God by saying that his desire for God is like wanting water when you're in a hot desert. See, David knew only God could satisfy that thirst. And for David, well, praising God was like eating a good meal. It nourished his soul. And David continued to see God provide. David saw God's power where his people worshiped as well. And God's presence was always there. And David praised God for it. I'm putting Psalm 63, 4 back up here on the screen because I want you to kind of look at, at what it says again because Look, David remembered God all night long and how God protected him with his mighty power. David knew God was worthy of praise. He kept thanking God with, with this time with his uh, instruments like a harp or an ancient stringed instrument called the lyre. Uh, and, and so David was so excited to praise God that he got up before the sun even rose and worshiped God all day long. And no matter where we are in the world or what time it is, God is always worthy of our praise. Every nation and all people need to know how amazing God is. And David continued by telling us that God's love, it's bigger than we can explain. See, God's love stretches beyond the heavens and his faithfulness goes into the sky. God deserves our praise. Everywhere we are, he is good to his entire creation. And God's worthy of our praise. I want you to say it loud with me, wherever you're at, that God is worthy of our praise. Yeah, keep saying it because David knew that and we know it. See, God loves us so much. His, his love, it's beautiful. It's amazing. And just as David did, we can praise God with a joyful heart. That's what I want you to remember today, that God is worthy of our praise. What's up, everyone? We made it. This is it. I'm here to share with you the last song on my record. It feels so good to be sharing all these songs with you, and it's meant the absolute world to me. So I hope you've enjoyed every single one of them. This last one actually focuses on how we should praise God with a joyful heart. God is faithful, and he keeps his promises. And because of that, he's worthy to be praised. You see, when I, was, when I was 12 years old, my dad actually took me to a concert where some amazing songwriters filled the room with praise. In the middle of the concert, I actually gave my life to Christ, and I felt, his, I felt the presence of God in big ways. I knew I wanted to make music someday too, and God had helped me through so many hard times in my life. And because of that, I wanted to praise God for who He is. So you'll notice today, 
I'm wearing some merchandise from a group of songwriters called Revere. And every time I wear this shirt, I think of all of the songwriters who came before me and inspired me to share my songs with other people. King David was actually one of these inspiring songwriters. You might remember him from before. We've actually talked about him quite a few times and David was a warrior and a shepherd, but he was also a strong worshiper of God. David saw how God was faithful in his life. And because of this, David was inspired to write many Psalms in the Bible. He knew that God was worthy of praise and wanted to share the goodness of God with everyone. You know, God helped David fight a giant and he was even willing to forgive David when he sinned because he was so quick to say sorry to God. And because he had experienced the amazing love of God, David, David writes this in Psalm 63, I will praise you for as long as I live. I will call your name when I lift up my hands in prayer. And then later in, in Psalm 108, he says, David is talking about how he wants to get up bright and early in the morning before even the sun comes up. So he has all day to worship God. God is worthy to be praised. And I want to be as excited to praise God and praise him so loud and proud without any hesitation. And I hope that this last song can encourage us to live that out boldly and praise God always. God is worthy of praise. Friends, it's been such a blessing to share all my music with you guys. You all are the best. Stay tuned for more of my music to come, but for now, I hope you enjoy this last one. So sit back, relax, and let's get ready to praise. So there you have it. God is worthy of our praise. You know, Psalm 139 states that God created the deepest part of my being. He says that in Psalm 139, 13. There's many body parts that we can see, but what are our deepest parts that we can't see? You know, I can't see my liver. I can't see my heart. I can't see my pancreas. What do you think this verse is describing that God created the deepest parts of my being? Well, for me, I kind of think God is working so much in us that there's so much that he's doing in our lives that we don't see. I don't always see God's hand of protection on my life, but I know it's there. I don't always feel God's presence in my life, but I know it's there. I don't always, I don't always think about that it's his mighty hand that keeps my heart pumping and it keeps my body moving and, and my eyes seeing, my ears hearing, my hands and fingers moving, those kind of things. So what do you what about you? What about you is amazing and wonderful? And why should you praise God for these things? Well, let's look at our memory verse to help us. We've had a great memory verse over these last five weeks, and it's Psalm 139, verse 13 and 14. Here's what it says: You created the deepest part of my being. You put me together inside my mother's body. How you made me is amazing and wonderful. I praise you for that. What you have done is wonderful. I know that very well. 
Well, kids, that's all the time we've got for today. And uh, again, I just want you to know how much I love you. And uh, thank you for watching. And come back next week. You're going to love Miss Sarah and love her teachings. But for me, this is it. Right hand up in the air. High five. Kids, much love. I'll see you later.